afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us today on Condo Insider. Um, I'm really excited today to have a special guest who is Lori um, Sides with, she is a condo specialist with the Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs in the real estate branch. Thank you, Lori, for joining us and being here today with us. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. So we're going to go through some of the most, um, the most frequent complaints into the, into your office. So um, if we can pull up the, um, the slides. So um, some of the most frequent ones are like condo, people complain about not being able to get certain condo documents or they do request for, they do the proper request forms, but then they don't get any response back. Um, and another one is um, constant board meeting um, or not constant, but um, the publication of the board meeting notice. And I know now there's some confusion because most of the meetings are held via Zoom so when it's posted on the notice, are you supposed to type out that whole string or can it, how can it be transmitted to an individual easier, you know? Well, and they the, should have the link in the notice, obviously. Yeah, but then when you, but how is the person supposed to be able to click on that link when it's a posted notice, you know? Mm, I see what you mean. Right, you know, so that's where some people are complaining about. Um, okay. You know, and then, um, um, board not following um, 514B. And if you're in planned community association, that would be 421J. Um, and then you also mentioned some, um, a lot of topics, uh, complaints are about water damage and insurance. Yes. And unequal house rules enforcement. And then owners that are unhappy about board actions and decisions. And then again, board not being responsive to the owners. So what we want to really talk, talk about today is about um, condo docs and how to request those documents. So on the next slide, um, it has the actual statute. So a, an owner can request to um, review uh, on 24 hour loan, the minutes um, once they've been approved, right? Um, yes. Okay, what other documents can they review on 24 hour loan? So essentially I would think they would go into the managing agent's office to be able to review certain documents. Yeah, I mean, they'd either have to go into the manage, uh, managing agent's office if they're going to view it or, you know, they would have it on loan. So like you said, the minutes and the, um, the meeting minutes for the current year and the prior year is one of the things. Okay, so if a homeowner gonna, wants to request, like maybe they want to request like a certain, um, a certain contract. Maybe there was a repair done on the roof or whatever, like a roof repair. They want to see the actual, maybe they want to see the scope of work because they don't fit, they don't, maybe they don't feel that something wasn't done appropriately. Um, so they make a request for condo docs and it's, um, if you move to the next slide. Um, okay, so how to request for documents. Um, there is a, um, there's a link on this PowerPoint, but basically on the DCCA website, it has um, a section. It says resources for condominium owners, boards, or boards of directors, or and or associations. So there's a there's a link um, in that section of your of your website that people can actually research, um, go to, and they can pull up one of the DCCA's um, flyer resources that shows them exactly how um, condo owners can access information. If you move to the next slide, so that's the flyer that shows. Um, shows the statute and how they can proceed about going to um, obtain whatever documents that they request. Um, it's a simple form to fill out. So they fill out the form, they submit it. So here's where the question has been arisen sometimes. They submit, do they submit it to the managing agent or do they submit it to the board themselves at the next board meeting? Who actually, if they submit it to the managing agent, is the managing agent obligated to submit that request to the board as well? Because the managing agent is the one that has all the documents. Right, I mean, it kind of depends um, what the agreement is between the board and the managing agent. Um, they may decide that the managing agent is the one to receive all the requests for documents from the owners um, rather than the board, because as you said, the managing agent would maintain the records. Uh, they may say, you know, no, the request should go to the board. It, it just kind of depends. So, I mean, there's not one answer. Um, 
So yeah. then that, that actually would be reflected in their managing agent contract. And who has that responsibility? It may be. Um, because I've had calls where people will say, you know, I contacted the board, I asked them for documents, and they told me that I need to contact the managing agent. So really, I mean, you can start with the board, um, you can, or you could really send it to the board and copy the managing agent. Mm -hmm. And that way you kind of hit both. Okay. And yeah. And they have 30 days to respond, right? To that request? They have 30, yeah, 30 days to respond from when they receive the request. And they're supposed to either provide you with the documentation that you ask for, or they're supposed to say, you know, we're not going to provide it to you and this is why. Right, and there is a separate form for that as well. Um, when they um, say why they're not going to do it, there's, a, there's a, another form for the managing agent or the board to um, say why, right? There's like three forms. I know when you do a request for documentation, the affidavit, then the form with whatever you want. And then the third one is for whoever you make the request to, if they're going to deny it, they have to state the reasons why they're denying it. Yeah, I mean, they should be telling you why they shouldn't just be saying, no, you can't <laughs> have it. They should be saying, you know, you can't have it. And this is why. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now um, let's move on to um, what happens um, if there's no response and you've done multiple responses. So I'm gonna turn this part over to you. Um, so the RICO part of the process. Okay, so if you've made a request, and of course we always say, we recommend or suggest that you make your request in writing, not just call, right? Because you can't really substantiate a phone call. Um, and if you do end up having to file a complaint with RICO, you know, you can't document the phone call, whereas if you've sent an email or you've used their the RICO form um, or your own letter for the request, you know, you, you save a copy for yourself, right? So you can submit that. And basically, RICO does have a complaint form. Uh, you can access it through our website and it's pretty self-explanatory. Of course, it's your name and they're going to ask you what documents you requested. They're going to ask you for a copy of your written request or requests like, you know, if you've sent more than one. And then they're also going to ask you if the board, um, board or, or managing agent responded. So, you know, did they send a letter saying, no, you can't have it because of this, or did they simply not respond? So you would, of course, want to, you know, supply copies of, of those documents, um, those requests, and, and if you got a denial along with the complaint form. So if you got absolutely no request or no response to your request, then you would note that on your complaint. Then the, how does what does RICO take take it from there if there was no action taken on your request? So basically, you know, they review the request, they review um, your request for documents, and determine whether you have made a valid request. And my understanding, I mean, I I don't work at RICO, right? But my understanding is they will contact um, the managing agent or um, perhaps the board and you know kind of ask you know, ask about it, um, ask about the request or, you know, why they haven't given it sort of thing. So what would be your best practices um, to resolve a complaint? Uh, well, or maybe even prior to doing a retail complaint. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, for condo living, right, there's this sense of community and we need to get along and we need to compromise. And so I don't know if I would, you know, make a request and then they don't, respond and I would rush right off to file a complaint. I mean, you can, but I would probably do a second request uh, for the documents and maybe, you know, in that request, you know, hey, I, you know, chapter 514B says I'm entitled to these documents, just want to make sure you're aware of that, you know, something kind of light, but yet sort of su supporting the fact that you should be getting these documents. And, um, you know, I guess hopefully they respond, but if not, you know, then maybe at that time you would want to consider filing the complaint with RICO. And, and everything is about documentation. So you really document your efforts. Yes. To back to the board. Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, I want to hit some of these other bullets from the first um, PowerPoint. Um, the board meeting notice and then um, because since now everything's being done virtually where you do Zoom or whatever other virtual platform. So they'll put the link 
But the problem is the link is in a, normally it's a hyperlink that you just click on through your computer, but yet it's a posted notice on the bulletin board. And they're saying, you know, cause I've had these complaints from people and they say, how can we click on the link when it's posted on the bulletin board? We're asking them to send us the link via email so that they can just click on it. So is there any guidance that you guys, your office can give when it's, especially now during the pandemic, everything's virtually? I mean, you know, not really, because of course when the statutes were written, it was before we even had, you know, Zoom or Skype or Teams or any of these capabilities. So of course, you know, it doesn't really address it. I understand what you're saying about, you know, not being able to click on the link. Um, I mean, I guess they could ask the board or the managing agent, hey, you know, could you send out, I'd like to attend the meeting, can you send out the link and see if maybe they would agree to do that instead of having to, you know, go to the platform yourself and then enter in the meeting ID and, you know what I mean, all those things without being able to just easily click on it. So it's really kind of taking a common sense approach, being community minded, owners are allowed to attend. So you really want to still incent, still put in your sense of community, being able to invite them on board, because if you don't send the link out, you're saying, no, you're not, you're not allowed, you know, because if they have to manually write that link out, because, you know, it could be that long, you know, but to me, you're kind of, kind of like telling them, no, you're not invited if you don't send the link. Mm. So I kind of tell people, I go, you know, it's kind of common sense because you need to click on that link. You can't expect everybody to type out that whole long thing manually. Uh, you know, I said, if they request it, just send it to them. It's all about transparency and being friendly and being community minded. Right. Right. Yeah. So. I mean, I agree. I don't, I don't really see why they would have an issue sending out the link, um, you know, and which just makes the most importance about doing their websites because they could post it on their website and send people to the website. It's posted on the meeting. They'll just post it on the website. Just go to the website. And that way they get more people to, to, take a look at the website because the website now is going to be becoming the portal of information for a lot of people, you know? Mm. Yeah. So, okay. The other one was um, about water damage and insurance. Yeah. I mean, we, of course, people like I, you know, I kind of was talking to you before the program started, people call us when they have a complaint, right? They don't call us to tell us they're happy. So <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, so, you know, a lot of times they'll call because there is some kind of water leak um, that happens and, you know, it's an insurance concern and, you know, there's the whole, um, it's complicated and I'm certainly not an insurance expert, but you know, is it something that's a common element? Is the association responsible? Did, did the source come from your neighbors? I don't know, you know, bathtub overflowing. Is it, you know, personal? Is it their insurance company that's responsible? And so people are calling us, you know, for help and for guidance in terms of, you know, what do they do? Um, yeah, so we, we do get that concern quite often. So they're not understanding where the, where the boundaries are as to the responsibility or who's going to fix it. Right. And they're just, you know, kind of like, Hey, we need help. So we, we normally tell them, you know, they should, of course, if there's something leaking and flooding right now, you know, you have to, you have right. to fix it and contain it, right? You can't be on the phone trying to determine or waiting for the next board meeting to see, you know, whose responsibility. I mean, you know, you have to fix it. But, you know, of course, you'd want to notify the board. You'd want to notify the resident manager, uh, managing agent, you know, your insurance company. You know, you want to cover all your bases and then someone's going to end up fixing it. And, and the insurance companies usually will be the ones who are going to... Um, you know, sort of duke it out among themselves and decide who's responsible. <laughs> That's a technical term. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, what about these unequal house rule enforcements? Well, I mean, you know, people call and say um, that house rules aren't being enforced equally. You know, maybe my neighbor did something and, you know, they didn't get cited. I did it and I got cited, you know, that sort of thing. Um, my neighbor's a friend of someone on the board. You know, I mean, we get we get all kinds of, um, you know, uh, people complaining about those those types of issues. Is there one that comes to mind that is just totally off the wall. 
Uh, you mean uh, about, no, not really. Um, yeah, not really. <laughs> Yeah, cause I remember being, I remember, I'm, I'm on the board of my condo, but I remember even my, my old condo, it was, it's a hard thing to kind of like, make sure you just stay on a straight line, you know, you might have a little issue because they've been a pain in the necks, but you still got to maintain that level of being straight, you know, and I think sometimes that's where it gets a little complicated and you essentially have to walk away for a little while and then come back to it, kind of kind of get your emotions out of it. Yeah, plus, I mean, if you think about it, the board isn't going to necessarily tell you, um, you know, what type of action they took regarding a violation on the part of another homeowner. So, you know, you may call us saying it was unfair and they weren't cited, but you don't know, they could have received a letter. They're not necessarily gonna run to you and say, hey, guess what? I got a violation letter from my, you know, from the board. I mean, those aren't the kind of things neighbors usually tell each other, right? That's true. Yeah. Okay, um, and again, and there's one more about board not responsive to owners. So it kind of goes back to the complaint um, that um, if the board requests certain things, but the uh, or a homeowner requests certain things um, from the board, um, and they're not being responsive. I mean, is that that's like what, what's on the top of your list of biggest complaints? What's the biggest complaint you guys get? Oh, gosh, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say because, you know, I've been getting a lot of document requests request complaints but and the one i just received recently it was it was something about the person made a request and i can't remember if they did it by email or by mail but they've been doing it this way they said for at least you know a year or so so then all of a sudden um the managing agent turned around and said no you have to send it by the other way so if they were all along doing it by mail now it's by email and if it was all along by email now it's by mail so the person was a little confused you know like why did it change why didn't they tell me because they hadn't been getting any kind of response so they were they were told basically they were communicating they weren't communicating via the right um <laughs> method to get a response oh okay so yeah yeah because i did have another person say that they they use the forms that are on the website, mm -hmm. but then when they submitted it to the managing agent, the managing hate, ha, agent had it for 30 days. Uh. And then when they followed up as to like, where are my documents? They said, well, you didn't submit it on the correct forms. You, you can only submit them on all our forms. So the managing agent's own forms. And I'm like, they had it for 30 days. Could they not have communicated that to you sooner? You know? Yeah, it's kind of another common sense thing, I think, you know, it's like if it if you receive something and it's on the wrong form, you know, wouldn't you try to help whoever is requesting the document and say, hey, you know, we would be happy to help you, but you need to put it on the right form. And, and this is the right form, you know, <laughs> not just like you have to put it on the right form and you get to guess what that form is, you yeah, know. Especially yeah, required, the affidavit requires a notary, you know, so now they have to go and it's not that easy to get a find a notary you know because the banks you have to have an appointment unless you really know a notary but you know so um because i know a couple of times I, it was kind of a hassle to go to the bank and get a notary so yeah uh, <laughs> okay um okay so what are the things can you add in about what what the condo specialist do does for the condo community well, so we're basically, I guess, uh, sort of a, a resource um, for information as well as referrals. So, you know, people call us obviously when they have questions, when they have complaints, when they're not sure about something. So that's our main function is education, you know, to try to, um, there's a lot of information out there, but people aren't necessarily aware of it. And you know they don't usually call us until they have a problem so um can i just mention one of our new resources that we um that we have sure. we just have this really really neat new condominium video education series and we've posted the first four videos on our website um the series is called hawaii condo living guide and um, we're even going to have one it's going to be a series of 15 right now we just have four on the website but we're even going to have one on um, 
on uh, association requests for association records. So <laughs> kind of what we're talking about today, we will have a video on that. Um, and they're really kind of fun, engaging, interesting videos. So I encourage everybody to go to our website and check them out. Cool. So you have four. So you have one on condo docs. What are the other ones? Oh, well, right now the ones that are posted, it, it's if um, you're interested in purchasing a, a condo, kind of what you should know. There's one about owner's rights and responsibilities. I think the board members' rights and responsibilities. And I can't remember the fourth one. It might be new, oh, new condo owners, I believe. I think that's what we have now up there. It's on the main page? Yes, um, when you go to the main page, we have sliders. So the first slider, it says um, Hawaii Condo Living Guide. And if you click on it, um, it'll take you to the page where you can view all four videos. Oh, okay, okay. You should check it out too, Raylene. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to, yeah, I am. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it's that one that slides. You can move it back and forth, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so really, best practices when it comes to complaints is really um, making sure you document everything. Um, you know, when you have, when you're starting to see issues coming up um, is really documenting your best efforts to resolve the complaint um, in a reasonable manner, um, to communicate with the board. Um, if you're requesting for um, certain documents, um, and I really want to really stress to even to the managing agents because <clears throat> you know, some owners don't always, when they buy a condo, they don't always, they don't even know what the declarations of bylaws are for, what they are for to begin with, um, it, even the house rules. Um, but, you know, simply just make it available upon request. And, and, and it's not like you have to print it out, you PDF it to them and it's the person requesting it's got to pay the money to print it out, you know, but, right. um, but even house rules, I remember when, um, one person told me that they had to pay for a copy of the house rules. I'm like, why? Why do you have to pay for it? You should give it out for free because you want to encourage complying with the house rules, you know? So some craziness goes on when people want to generate revenue. I go, no, that's, that's crazy. You're making it harder for them to comply with house rules. <laughs> so give it out for free, post it on the website, then they can, there's no excuse. It's on the website. So they have every opportunity to go look at it, you know? Yeah, make it easy. Don't make it difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what are the best practices can you can you can you give us give advice to homeowners or even board members? As far as complaints? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking about ex access to the records, I think if you're on the board or you're the managing agent, you know, you you should probably try to familiar familiarize yourself with the documents that you're required to, um, you know, give to a, a, an owner, um, just so you're aware. I mean, I, I would think they would be, but you know, maybe they're not. So become aware and, you know, if, if it's something you should give, then, you know, give it, try to, try to not have a complaint, right? If there are other complaints, um, most of the statute, as you know, is self-enforcing. Um, so when there is a complaint, it would be something where you try to resolve it through mediation, uh, arbitration, or, you know, last would be court action. So there's only a few limited sections of the statute where you can actually file a complaint with the Regulated Industries Complaints Office or RICO, and, and the documents, you know, section is one of those. That would pretty much be the because they wouldn't do anything about enforcement, right? In a RICO complaint, would they? Well, again, it has to be one of the few sections where they have the power to investigate. And there's not, it's um, spelled out in 514B 65 investigatory powers. And, um, you know, there's not that many. Most of it is self enforcing. Okay. Um, so we got uh, <clears throat> about three more minutes. Um, so now with the pandemic, have you been seeing, hearing any, um, unusual complaints because of the pandemic? Um, because there's some people because of social distancing, wearing the mask, anything like that? 
I like think in the beginning, you know, in, you know, like about a year ago, so March and April, I think a lot of people had a lot of questions because, well, it's new and we really didn't know very much. And of course, people were scared. So, you know, there were things about, you know, being in the lobby and the elevators and, you know, how often should it be cleaned? And, you know, can someone sit in the lobby and, you know, all those kinds of things. And of course, meetings, you know, should they have them? Um, can they have them in person? Do they need to have them, you know, can they have them electronically? Um, those were definite issues. If, if someone has COVID in your, um, you know, condo, um, you know, can they, can they tell you, you know, can I say I need to know the name of the person who has, you know, COVID? I mean, you know, these sorts of things. Um, of course, mask wearing, you know, and then amenities, right? You know, there was questions, can they close the pool? Can they, you know, can they close the barbecue? Do I still have to pay my maintenance fee? I don't get to use the pool now. They closed it. You know, why do I still have to pay? you know, my yeah. maintenance fee. And it's it's kind of hard to explain to people, well, even though you can't use the pool, it still needs to be treated with chemicals. You know, the, the pool company still needs to come and clean it. So, you know, there's still an expense there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some lights that need to be paid for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, these things, these expenses don't go away just because um, of COVID. Yeah. Um, so have those complaints stopped, kind of like dwindled down now that we're year, a year into this new lifestyle? I think I, so. I don't really get those kind of complaints anymore. No. I know for me, I'm like, I'm going to have to start walking. Because, man, I can feel my muscles getting a little wiggly there. <laughs> yeah, you and me both. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so um, we've got a minute left. Okay really fast a whole minute wow <laughs> <laughs> so um, I want to thank everybody um, make sure you go to the DCCA website the real estate um, branch website right yes the real estate branch and they have um, some um, they posted some of their own videos for condo owners um, I'm looking forward to the next one on the, on the documents because I know we've done the, this conversation quite a few times because um, so, so there seems to be still issues getting all the word spread out into the into the areas um, and getting everybody educated. Um, but Lori, I really want to thank you um, and your office. Um, I know I sometimes I communicate with you guys quite often on certain things, <laughs> just to clarify. <laughs> but I really appreciate you coming in today and also appreciate everyone in your office um, for what you guys do. Um, being condo specialists, not not that easy. Well, <laughs> you're welcome, and I'll pass those um, those kudos or thank yous on to them as well. Okay, thank you, and thank you everybody for joining us. We'll see you again next week.